What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. Sever them up! Yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yes! Boys, thank you for uh, for doing this. I appreciate it so much. Uh, please let me know whereabouts in the world you are. Plug and promote anything and everything that you like. You want to go, Aker? You want me to take it? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm. We're from. Go ahead, Brendan. <laughs> All right, sick. So. Um, I take her. This is Brendan uh, from the band Set for Tomorrow. Uh, we're the band's based out of Richmond, Virginia, uh, but we're pretty spread out. Um, I'm in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, uh, and Acres in uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia, which is not too far from Richmond. Uh, but Richmond's our home base. Uh, we make modern metalcore, hard rock kind of music, and uh, we got some shows coming up. And uh, yeah, all that stuff's on all our social media. Um, at set for tomorrow on everything uh, and we're stoked to be here thanks for having us pg oh it's my pleasure acre how did you how did you even meet brendan if he if he's you know, all the way over there how did you guys even meet and and make this awesome project so the the most og member is actually from richmond and he records a lot of bands in the area as well so i got kind of hooked up with him when i was like messing with um just going out to events and shows and things like that and then working on a previous project stuff and then i ended up working with mikey and that's how i met him and then he just kind of uh yeah i just i just showed up whenever they needed me most <laughs> does, does it get complicated when like when it comes to recording or, or do you guys all have like similar dosis and just and just share like the the session files around or how does the recording process go about there is this life hack uh now that it's 2024 and it's this program uh that we use to virtually record basically so we'll do a lot of our writing sessions instrumentally virtually um and then we'll link together sometimes we do lock-ins it just kind of just depends on what the schedule is for everybody but whenever we want to go like late night and people are kind of separated we'll just like call in them we'll do just one of those virtual calls and i always drive down to richmond to, to do my vocals just because it's it's way it's way more of a you get a lot more feedback in person real time when you're working on stuff with everybody in the room the vibe's different so um definitely go out in person to go record with mikey uh in richmond but we do a lot of this stuff remotely whenever it permits it just kind of depends on everyone's schedule cool very very cool uh do, did you guys have any before you settled on set for tomorrow did you have any other band names in mind if you can recall like years back that almost made it <sighs> and why did you I not don't... pick a different band name so I don't, honestly, Mikey was uh, dead set on set for tomorrow. And we'd, honestly, we had kicked around changing it to something. And then we all like sat down and like stared at each other and we're like, yeah, I got nothing, man. <laughs> so I mean, it, it's, um, the, yeah, it just, it the, just the name is worked, popular. You know? it, it seems like it's working so far, so I wouldn't change it. But so you just sat yeah. in, a, in a dead set circle and everyone just said, all right, that's the one. Yeah, I mean, Mikey had had this name for a while, and he's, like, was really set on it and really liked that, like, you know, with, like, music and everything. Like, you know, you're always you're always ready for the next day or, like, some cheesy stuff. And it's, like, you know, whatever. Um, but, you know, it worked, and I think it's, it's sometimes hard to come up with something, like, very original that's, like, not taken. And I think you see that a lot in band names now with people, like, taking out the vowels or um or the consonants or whatever or totally. like making an a a v or whatever and um yeah. set for tomorrow was open there is a lot of set for bands you know or like there's like bury or tomorrow and stuff so there there is yeah. some similar names but more or less it's it's original so we were like you know in the sft like kind of abbreviation is cool you know i feel like so yeah, it it just kind of works as like a moniker to to work under. I mean, I feel like I don't know. It's fine. Is it my favorite band name in the world? No, but I'm like, but it works for us, and you know, <laughs> it it works. It's effective. <laughs> when I was uh, doing some research for today to be able be prepared, uh, I was kind of going through your guys' catalog, and I've jammed a couple songs, but somehow I I hadn't 
recalled how good Like Murder was. We've been playing Control a lot, but Like Murder has got to be my favorite of like the top five Spotify list right there. Aker, do you do you have any any trick? Oh, my pleasure. Do you have any tricks or techniques that you do when it comes to preparing your voice for for screaming or singing? Because I know that one has a little bit more like aggressive vocals on it than some of the other ones. Um, what do you do to prepare for recording and or a show before and after? Uh, there's a slew of things. Actually, one of the things I was looking at buying for this next run uh, was I wanted to buy like a vocal nebulizer really bad. A lot okay. of people have been kicking that around on like how it works really well and like keeping your voice very um, like immediately hydrated because chugging water feels really nice, but it's like more of a placebo effect because you have to like absorb it in your body to actually have it affect you. It doesn't really affect you until you have been sitting on it for a while. Um, but aside from all of that, I usually do like a, a basic like scale run. There's a couple exercises I did. Uh, shout out to Melissa Cross. I went to go to her back in 2018 or 19, 17 or something like that. And I, uh, I've got like a quick like 10 minute dumbed down version of a long was that custom to you from to her yeah i went to wow. her in new york yeah i traveled out to go do that with her. it was really it was a lot of fun it was uh it was it was a crazy experience and i didn't know uh bless her and her patience <laughs> it was a lot of help at the time that i went there and it was great but she's a legend um yeah i just do like scale exercises kind of uh flow in and out of like adding distortion. So you kind of like warm up where all of your distortion actually comes from, be it if you were a fry vocalist or if you do false chord screams, just, you don't want to just start, start on a, start on empty. <laughs> or start go on go ahead and plug the run that, that you said that you guys are about to do. Uh, you got it. <laughs> we got it's, it. Um, it's, caught him off guard. August, um, August, um, it was at 23rd, 24th, and 25th. So we're going to be in Newark, Delaware on um, Friday, August 23rd. Um, Allentown, Pennsylvania on the 24th at uh, Soft Machine Gallery. And on the 25th, we're going to be at uh, JB's Micro Pub in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And uh, then we got like five, four, Four shows in September. Um, I don't have those dates in front of me, um, but that one just got announced like two days ago. Um, awesome. So it's like the 6th through 10th, and we're hitting uh, New York and some other kind of East Coast states. Um, so, yeah. West Coast in the future, I hope, please. I hope. Yeah, it is I so hope. expensive and challenging, but we're trying. <laughs> no worries. Did, yeah. did you guys bring the, the hot sauce for the trivia portion? Oh god! You, you, oh, you, you brought a ton. I got a skull container just just Excellent. for the yeah, sake of showmanship. <laughs> Brendan, tell me you got you got some hot sauce somewhere. Give me two minutes. Wait, 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 wait! wait. Be... Before before you grab it, before, <laughs> I, I need to stall for a second. But before you grab it, yeah. can you guys agree on a movie or TV show? Or if I look up trivia on this movie or TV show, there's no way I stump you. Because if I do. We have to do hot sauce. Regardless of whether you get it right or wrong, I'm doing some hot sauce with you, so I'm gonna be burning as well. Um, man, that's Brent, hard to come up with go... one on the spot. Because <laughs> video game, anime, and what else? <laughs> do we yeah. Know? Um... You don't have a favorite movie? A favorite movie, or like, let's say you guys are long runs in the van or, or the bus or whatever. There's not like a film that you guys always play over and over again. It's the band oh. comedy movie where you, there's no way I can stump you. Man, um, this is really making me realize how boring I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, God, I'm trying to trying to think. Um, God. Do I pick a TV show? Yeah, yeah. Let's do, let's do let's do let's do let's do a TV show. Um, I'll tell you what. Up? Let me let me let me let me pick uh, uh, Acres brain a little bit while you grab that the hot sauce, Brendan. And but think about it. Think about the TV show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real quick. Yeah, right. I'll be right back. Aker, how did you know <laughs> Fioria Records was the one? And was there was there other labels that had approached you guys? Because you guys kind of came off as like an independent band that found like the perfect footing 
and you just knew this was the right home. How did you guys know that? Thank you, man. I appreciate that. So uh, our band's like, uh, we're in an interesting position where like a lot of us delve in a lot of the extracurricular activities you have to outsource as a band typically. Mikey's like a full-time producer. Uh, Brendan's a full-time content creator. Cam- he does like camera, film, content, all that stuff. So he goes on tour with bands and, and like shoots content for them live. And then uh, I started picking up doing our merch designs and uh, some other stuff like some of our flyers. Um, and we kind of like kept trying to do a lot of DIY stuff. And it kind of comes to a point where there's almost like red tape once you hit a certain ceiling to like just to start meeting people and, and, and get more invested into like the entire, you know, the, the realm of people who are actually doing the thing. Um, and Brendan and the guys actually have known uh, Cody, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, in, in general, just uh, Brendan does work with If Not For Me Too. And we, we just like, it, it felt like the right decision uh, for for us at the time because he he's just been Cody from Theoria has just been a great help with like booking things and kind of helping us like develop a little bit more. And, and it's not, uh, it hasn't been a super invasive process. It's actually been very, very nice and, and cool to, to have somebody to talk to. It's a nice and cool. Brendan could probably elaborate a little bit more cause he's actually the one who got a little more acquainted to my knowledge with, uh, with Cody and that kind of stuff. They kept it smooth and simple and easy. And it was just, uh, everything you needed in the contract right there would you yeah. agree, mm-hmm. agree brandon yeah absolutely man it's just uh yeah he's a super homie and knows a lot of people and knows a lot of things and uh is just lending his expertise to kind of developing us and help us with pitching our music and getting shows together and trying to get us to grow so we can get out to the west coast and see you you know please did, yeah, you, exactly. did you think of the uh the tv show um uh, it's okay i should have i should have been thinking more i, was thinking I must about warn you th- this get. this trivia portion is like i pride myself in stumping everyone so you're gonna get like the absolute hardest questions i can find on whatever you pick do you watch it brandon did you watch a lot of disney movies when you were going on at all um Any of them? yes yes and no some i don't know i kind of want to like pop out and be like i don't know i like bob's burgers bob's burgers is pretty sick um if if that's like a good show or if you're looking for more like a series i'm in the middle of a bunch of them so i don't want to do trivia on one where i'm going to get spoiled for myself um (laughs) but i mean all of the big ones i haven't watched like i've seen like one season of breaking bad i've never seen any game of thrones i've seen like what about a movie what about a movie movie might be easier if we disagree on a movie let's do Um, a movie and Acre has like, seen it too, be... so he can contribute. So, yeah, so... yeah, yeah. Um, ah, what's a movie? I don't know. I, I like Kill Bill. Kill Bill is a pretty sick movie, but I haven't seen it in a while. Um, but that's definitely one of like my favorite films that I've watched. Uh, Are you guys horror, movie, horror Austin, movie fans? Disney movies. We can we can go we can go Disney. We can go horror. Like, um, ooh, uh, let's go. You didn't watch Cars of Cowardly Dog growing up, did you? Yeah, 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 I watched it. All right, I could name anything from that show. Courage the Cowardly Dog? Yeah, sure, yeah, let's show. do it. I'm game. Yeah, yeah. let's go throw back Cartoon Network. <laughs> Rest in peace, yeah. Yo, speaking of that, it just recently R.I.P. too, like the, the, the studios, they just, it's just a like rerun channel, I believe now. Yeah. Pretty crazy, yeah. man. That was uh, that was Boomerang. childhood right there. <laughs> wow. Do you guys have a, a worst show ever? Every, every I feel like every band has like a worst show ever where everything went wrong. The reason I'm asking though is how did you learn from it? Do you have a plan B in case this happens again? That kind of thing. Um, I think uh, worst show ever. I don't know, it's got to be one of the shows, We're... Acre, where we had, like, the tech difficulties and, like, stuff just, Yeah, like... it definitely has to be one of the ones where we had, uh, yeah, te- tech issues. I think, like, the 
like patch changes weren't all the way there. Yeah, and then, I think it was uh, it was I tried it was a Baltimore I, show. I, it was a Baltimore show. I uh, I even tried to I just tried to land a corny joke because I love dad jokes and it was just way too <laughs> it was way too corny to actually it, work and it it just didn't yeah. land at that time. But um, it wasn't really that much to learn from. I think we just didn't like uh, we didn't troubleshoot well enough. I think before we actually started, and I just need to not try to tell dad job jokes all the time. So I learned that one <laughs> <laughs> the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> just in general. Um... You know, I think after after we run into enough tech difficulties of just stuff not working live, live, whether it's like an issue with like the laptop for like any tracks or like uh, patch changes, so we don't have to like use pedal boards and stuff. We like lean on the tech for that. And uh, I don't know. At this point, after we've had that happen live, we're like stuff was misfiring like it's supposed to drop into a breakdown and then the guitar is still on like a clean channel or something um we just run a lot more tests and probably like that's good try smart. too that's hard smart. to make sure like that kind of stuff doesn't happen live because you know people spend their money to come to a show so the the least we can do is put on a good performance and not have our shit yeah, exactly. failing on us <laughs> i'm yeah. actually struggling I'm not repeating the same offense twice I'm yeah. struggling to find Courage Trivia. It wasn't on the, the place I usually use it, but I have found one decent one that I think could work. So this is my Courage Trivia. I feel like I'm doing the hot sauce, but here we go. It's just a death note. That could have been another one too. In yeah. every this episode, there's a variation of what song heard in the episode. What? <laughs> In every single episode, there is a variation of a really popular song played, but it's it's different every single episode. What is the name of that song? I'm cooked, bro. I got no clue. <laughs> That's crazy. You know what? This was the silver lining here is that I get to learn stuff about my favorite childhood show. <laughs> and I get burned in the process of doing it. Enjoy the hot sauce. <laughs> the answer is the Mission Impossible theme song. And I didn't even oh. know that. The Mission Impossible oh, theme song yes, is played in every episode, but it varies how they arrange the music per episode. That's crazy, bro. Cheers. Oh, God. Cheers. Woo! Oh, God. Woo! Why'd I grab the hot stuff? While we're suffering, let me know what you guys can plug and promote the rest of 2024. Obviously, some stuff can't be explained and told yet because it's all about timing. What are you allowed to tell us? I know we talked briefly about the run in August, but post that all the way to December. What can we look forward to from you guys? God, um, I guess the point socials. is to do this with hot with hot sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got Keep it. Keep up with us on all socials. like hot ones. Keep up with us on all socials because we're going to be dropping more music before the year ends more than more than one song maybe more than two songs maybe more than three that's the best i can say about. we'll take it that's awesome yes and uh trying to get some more shows on the books as well so um definitely uh keep up with us uh with us on there and um yeah i think uh more or less it shows music we do content and all that kind of stuff on our pages. So if you're into that kind of thing, follow us on the, the TikToks and the Instagram and all that. Um, but yeah, hot sauce. Rough by itself. <laughs> yeah. we, do, we, do lots of, we do lots of fun content. So if you like to see really dumb stuff, you should totally check it out. We have like a whole, uh, there's like a voiceover where I wrote 50 Shades of Grey while I was screaming it. So oh, go, that's go, cool. deep, go, go dive deep on our stuff. <laughs> Before, got a lot of silly uh, stuff on there. before I let you guys go, and I really appreciate your time, I, I want to know, when was a moment that the band had a learning experience? And the reason I ask that is maybe there's somebody watching that, that just formed a band or sees this interview on YouTube tomorrow where they're like, oh, man, we just started. I want to hear a moment where you guys either made a mistake and you don't want this, this up-and-coming band to make the same mistake, or maybe you invested money in something that ended up being a dud, what don't do this like any kind of, of, of uh, advice that you could give to a uh, uh, up-and-coming local band 
I think the biggest thing is um, when TikTok first started, like, snapping, we were, like, I feel like most bands where we were, like, let's let's just be, like, we're trying to do the thing serious. Like, we're, we're a professional band. We're trying to be professional. Like, and we took ourselves very seriously, and we didn't, like, cash in on, like, stuff like TikTok right away. And... I think that was probably the biggest learning experience because when things really started going better for us, not just numbers wise, but enjoying the process and enjoying each other was really found that just like we're just dudes making music like there's no the smoke and mirrors rock star shit is fucking dumb and overrated like just have fun. Don't be scared to make content and be yourself like nobody's too cool for anything so like you know we're like dorky video game guys that apparently don't watch a lot of movies but like we make cool music <laughs> and we like that and we want to share that with you you know so like um don't take yourself too seriously because i do feel like there were missed opportunities there and um and we just started to make better connections with our fans and have a better time chasing this crazy fucking dream by truly allowing us to be ourselves on our social media and in our content. And uh, it's, it's just a much more enjoyable process. If you're trying to be in a band, it's a, it's a long, difficult journey, and it's very difficult to make something out of it and get any sort of traction. You may as well enjoy the ride because it's going to be fucking rough. It's a lot. It's true. That's some true words. And right. I'm going to say another part, just another another individual piece here. Um, take chances with fun stuff. Don't try to just necessarily ride the wave and do whatever's popular because the next biggest thing is going to be something that hasn't happened yet. Um, so don't don't uh, don't like pigeonhole yourself to just like riding the wave on everything, I would say. Because I think that a lot of bands, uh, myself included, have gone the safe option on some things and worry about a little bit too much. And I think that as we develop and kind of reinvent ourselves and keep experimenting with things, we keep kind of it, it, uh, I've fallen in love with the process of working on stuff more and more every single time we dive deep. So don't be afraid to take chances and be a little uncomfortable. It's part of it's part of the process. I love Trust both of those. You guys must buy from the same hat collector. I see the the hat racks behind you both. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but for real, oh, this, this, <laughs> this is fun, guys. I appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule to do this, man. Uh, if it's okay with you, I'm going to throw this on YouTube tomorrow, tag you in some stuff. But uh, we wish you guys nothing but success. Please come to the West Coast. Uh, I, I safe travels on the, uh, the August mini run adventure. Look forward to not one, not two, but maybe three. Maybe more singles before the year is over. But, uh, guys, this is fun, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Dude, thank you so much, BG. Appreciate, appreciate you, brother. Aker and Brendan for Separate of Love! Hell yeah! Cheers, boys. Thank you. <laughs>